All right, this chapter talked about electrical transport, dielectrics, and ferroelectrics. We've covered the first one. Now let's talk about dielectrics. Dielectrics, these are um, insulators, first and foremost. They don't conduct electricity, but they do a really interesting and specific thing for devices. They allow us to build capacitors, right? If you've taken ECE, you've learned about capacitors, right? Um, let's just remind ourselves what these things are. They have to do with polarization and separation of charge, okay? So capacitors are, you take a battery, right? Something like this, and if it's a parallel plate capacitor, um, then these are metal sheets. So these blue squares here, these are metal sheets, right? Right next to each other with some gap between them. You typically want this to be a really small gap, really, really tiny gap between those materials. The reason why is because the amount of capacitance that you can build up is going to be equal to the um, dielectric constant of the material between your gaps. So it could be air or vacuum, right? That's one possibility. Multiplied by the area of those, of those metal plates, but divided by the distance, right? So the capacitance is going to be that. So therefore, we want large areas, but we want them really close together. Now, a way that we can increase the capacitance, um, which again is just the charge divided by the voltage, the things, that's how we define it. It's just charge divided by voltage. One way to increase the capacitance is to put not air or vacuum between your material, but put a material, a dielectric material, in between your material, right? So why is it when I put a little bit of this dielectric material between those plates that I see any difference in the capacitance? Well, it has to do with polarization and how much polarization or how much charge we can fit on the surface of these plates, right? If you can fit more charge, more Q for a given voltage, then you increase your capacitance, right? Because capacitance is just Q over V. So why is putting something in between those allowing us to put more charge along those plates? Well, let's answer that. Uh, to do that, well, first let's remind ourselves what uh, E-naught is. E-naught is the permittivity of free space. So if it was filled with vacuum, that would tell you how much charge you can get going to be epsilon naught. But if you have a material that has a dielectric constant, which all materials have a dielectric constant greater than you know one, so the worst you can do is a vacuum. You can only get better by filling it with an insulating material. Um, where is it coming from? It has to do with polarization, right? So we've talked about this before. If you have an atom, right, it has its positive nucleus and then a cloud of a ne negatively charged electrons around it. If I apply an electric field to this, right, the field goes that way, my cloud actually does this. My nucleus wants to go in the direction of the field, right, but my cloud wants to go the other direction, right? So you get that picture happening there. That causes a slight positive charge over here and it causes a negative charge over there. So that difference of charge by some distance, some physical separation, is a polarization. A polarization is equal to the charge separation, charge times the separation, P Q times D, right? So that is a dipole moment on, in this case, on an atom, but it could also exist on a molecule, right? We know that water, for example, water is H2O, so there's two of these H, and then you, they're bonded to an oxygen, and since oxygen has lone pairs off on those side, then you end up with a negative over here and a positive that way, right? So this has a dipole like that, right? Each water molecule has a dipole built into it. So what happens is if you fill your material, let's say with something like water, totally pure water that doesn't conduct electricity. If you take all the ions out, it doesn't conduct electricity. Let's say that it's between these two parallel plates in your capacitor. What's going to happen is that as you apply an electric field across this, right, you've got an electric field going across your, um, your dielectric, all of those molecules are going to line up, right? If I apply an electric field, all my molecules are going to line up. All my water molecules will line up like this, all the way across my dielectric. And in doing so, think what happens. They're going to put their positively pointed end over here, and that's going to allow me to build up extra negative due to those molecules. And their negative end is going to be here, which is going to allow me to put extra positive on this side. So it allows me to put more charge on the two plates because these molecules contribute their um, electrical you know, polarization to it as well, right? That's why we want to put something in there that can be polarized in an electric field, okay? So, so what this allows us to do is we come down here, we can calculate the surface charge density D, so that's coulombs per meter squared. That's not capacitance, that's coulombs per meter squared. And that's going to be proportional to our applied electric field, right? So D, our surface charge density, will be equal to the dielectric constant multiplied by whatever our electric field was. And then we know that D is also equal to the permittivity of free space times the electrical field plus our polarization, where the polarization is of your dielectric material, right? And for many materials, we can then solve for polarization as being the permittivity of free space multiplied by the quantity of our dielectric constant for our material, ER, or epsilon R, minus 1, 
and that quantity multiplied by the electric field. So that's going to hold for a lot of materials, and this is the origin of getting additional charge along the surface of these plates because you have the alignment of these molecules in or atoms in electric fields.